markets in Europe, the UK and the US have become less and less optimistic this year about the scale and timing of interest rate cuts. Though this didn't stop equities rallying strongly. Now, what I'm plotting in this chart is the size of official interest rate cuts priced into markets by the end of June for the US Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank and the Bank of England. At the start of the year, all three were expected to deliver roughly the same cuts, 50 basis points, by June. Since then, the three profiles have been remarkably similar, despite the big differences in the movement of the respective economies. But given that central banks are likely to move in quarter point steps, we can see that the chances of a cut in June now differ markedly. 100% for the ECB, little more than 50-50 for the US Fed, with the Bank of England in the middle. At a press conference last month, the president of the European Central Bank, well, she came as close as she ever does to pre-committing to a rate cut in June. Chances of a rate cut by the Bank of England, according to the markets, tumbled in January, but they've since revived as more and more economists have realised that UK inflation is set to fall below target, yep, below target, in the next few months, and remain close to the target for a year or more. It's uncertainty about UK wage inflation, which is starting from a a very high base and going to be supported presumably by this week's big 10% hike in the minimum wage. And that's the big factor arguing for delay. In the US, the year began with some disappointing key inflation data and we've also had a very strong economy there with the labour market particularly strong. And we'll see what the latest employment report brings on Friday. Now I'll be looking at the unemployment rate rather than the number of jobs or average hourly earnings, given the huge inflow of unauthorised workers from abroad. This has boosted rents in the US and they've got a huge weight, 36% in the US Consumer Price Index, and that's over four times the weight in Europe and the UK. More on this next week. The key point I want to make this week is that there are good reasons why central banks need to get on with cutting rates to avoid actually tightening policy. They've been holding official rates, nominal official rates on hold for, well, six months or more. So real rates have been rising as actual and prospective inflation has fallen. And the move from QE, that's quantitative easing via government bonds, to quantitative tightening, well, it's exacerbated this effect. Central banks made a big mistake, thinking that they were tightening policy when they started raising rates from ultra-low levels two years ago, because inflation was rising so rapidly, real rates fell. And they should avoid making the reverse mistake. First cut in this cycle will obviously attract enormous debate and controversy. In reality, it should be an easier decision. The more difficult issue is working out the pace of subsequent cuts. Until next week, goodbye from me.